think we'll just get started with a few introductions. So my name is Matt Wilson and I'm the communications coordinator for the senior center here. Um, and I assist with the Fee Senior Meals program. Um, I wanna thank you all today for joining us for this Save Lunch Rally. Um, if you're not familiar, Save Lunch is a hashtag used by um, Meals on Wheels America to advocate for more federal funding um, for Meals on Wheels programs across the country. And this month is March for Meals, which is our biggest fundraising month of the year for our Meals on Wheels program. Um, and we're so excited to have so much community support. And as you can see from some of the information on the table out there, um, we have a lot of events planned this month. Um, so thank you again for continuing to support us. And I think what we'll do is just kind of pass the mic around and just have everyone introduce themselves. Um, so yeah, just pass it on here. Good afternoon, I'm Nancy Murray and I am from the Central Vermont Council on Aging and I am the volunteer coordinator um, for them. So it's very nice to see everybody. Hi, I'm Caitlin Rosine, also from Central Vermont, Vermont Council on Aging and I also work primarily on volunteers, recruitment and placements. Good afternoon, my name is Poa Mutino. I am the Feast Senior Meals Program Manager. I have been in this position since October of 2022, so about a year and four months. And I'll make some short remarks, and then I have some statements from a few different um, leaders in our community, which I would like to find volunteers to read. Um, they each take between 20 seconds and a couple of minutes, depending on the length of the remarks to read. So um, just right now while I'm speaking about it, does anybody volunteer to add their voice? Um, the statements are from Feed Every Need, a organization out of the Woods Lodge who uh, have as a mission to make prepared food um, available for our community that's ready to eat. Um, also, Ann Watson, Vermont State Senator and former mayor of Montpelier. And I had one more. Which I need to grab from the printer. Um, thank you, Yona. Anybody else? Kara, thank you. I'll read the third one. How about, or Nancy, did I see a hand? Nancy, thank you. Um, so first for the numbers, uh, the feast, yes, okay, and then from 12 to 1, there will be um, an hour for his, his speech. <laughs> um, so look at the numbers, the feast annual budget is approximately $240,000 a year. And that is made up primarily of about $80,000 that we spend purchasing food, which has undergone inflation. Um, don't quote me on these numbers, I've, but I have been looking at the budget. And um, if you do want to share any information about our budget, uh, please email me. My card is on the table. But so about that, um, a large amount of our budget goes to purchasing food. And then also staff costs. We have a core staff who receive salaries of two, myself at 30 hours a week, and our executive chef, Shalonda James, at 30 hours a week. And we are city employees. And there are four months remaining in the fiscal year of the city of Montpelier, or less. Um, it ends uh, in June. And we're making headway. We, from our sources of revenue, um, have a smaller deficit this year, this fiscal year of 2023 than we did in 2022. And we've got great ideas for revenue going forward. Um, the two that I'm developing a business plan for are increasing rentals of our kitchen, which a local chef said is the most beautiful kitchen in Montpelier, and can become even more efficient through uh, increasing the the speediness of our equipment. We're interested in a, 
an electric range rather than a propane range for cooking and adding an additional convection oven and an additional meal sealer. We currently produce 23,000 meals a year according to a recent survey done by the city um, of the meal program of uh, 2022. And those numbers are growing. We, uh, while we've stopped our grab and go outdoor uh, twice weekly meal, um, which was a response to the pandemic in large part, uh, we have supplemented that with congregate meals which has been a challenge to bring those back with a staff of two, both working 30 hours a week. But I've been sharpening my skills and have been cooking those meals and leading volunteers to cook those meals um, for uh, almost my entire tenure here so far. And excitingly, we will be uh, offering them weekly beginning this coming uh, Thursday, or not coming, but the, the first Thursday in April. And they're served at noon here in the community room. We also have a budget to advertise for those meals thanks to a, a grant from Meals on Wheels America. So we'll be putting the word out about them now that it's easier to remember. Um, they're once a week on Thursdays. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. It's great to see most of the chairs filled. We've got at least one more chair to fill, and that's our chef, who is doing what she often does, which is working very hard and unable to be there at the exact time that something is called for people who don't have a kitchen to manage. Um, so thank you, Shalanda. Maybe we can give a, a, an applause for Shalanda in the kitchen. Thank you. Thank you, Shalanda. So I look forward to what everybody has to say. Passing is always an option, but when you get the mic, if you could just introduce yourself with your name, if you'd like your pronoun, and where you live. And um, this may take us, it's 1125, so this may take us past noon. If there's anybody that needs to go at noon sharp, please feel free to excuse yourself. Um, and try to take between a minute and three minutes with your remarks. Again, thanks for being here. Um, Matt gave a good overview of the month that we're in. We're fundraising. We need to fundraise $20,000 this month. So if you know anyone who hasn't donated yet and would like to, they can go to uh, the city of Montpelier's website, montpelier.org slash feast, and make a donation or have a conversation with myself or with Matt or with Amy, our new director. Hi, everybody. My name is John Foster, and uh, I've always thought it was important to give back to the community that uh, then I was a big brother. I was been a senior companion. Uh, and so when Noah, whose route I help with, asked me if I would give him a hand on Thursdays, Thursdays is a big day because it's four frozen meals and accompanying milks and fruits, so it's, it's a big load. And uh, I'm no spring chicken, but uh, Noah's got about 10 years on me, so... Um, so, so, so I was I was happy to because you know he, he's a friend he's a good guy and uh, he did the driving all I had to do was the lugging and um, so it's been about two years since uh, since we've been together and what a list of characters we have a couple you know you get to know the people and you know in, in some of these people you know you might be the only person they see you know for all week. And uh, so um, we have a couple in their 90s. Donald, who's like 98, and he can tell you the whole history of my been in Montpelier his whole life, you know. Then we have Hani, who's uh, 
was the youngest ever to uh, make a transatlantic crossing during World War II. Her and her, and her sisters were, uh, I think, nine and eleven, respectively. You know, and uh, so it's, you know, it's an enriching and um, fulfilling little job, and uh, it's fun, and I look forward to it every day. Thank you. Thanks, I'm Yona. I'm a trainee here, actually, um, through Associates for Training and Development, which is a nonprofit and um, grant-funded program. And I help out with Meals on Wheels and also do assorted other things <laughs> here. Um, you might see me at the reception desk or my desk, quote unquote, which is at the side entrance. Um, anyway, um, you know, when I was first told about doing this position, coming on board, and it basically said, uh, I mean, one of the things was communicate with the drivers. And I thought, what? <laughs> How much can there be to that? Well, there could be a lot, <laughs> depending what day of the week it is. And, um, you know, sometimes we have to find a substitute driver. Uh, we have more or less amount of um, notice for that. And, um, but everyone, uh, you know, especially the recipients are so positive about Meals on Wheels. And um, there are a few quotes from people on that wall or that door if you get a chance to look. Um, but people say positive things all the time. And um, it's wonderful when the food comes from, uh, you know, locally, from the feast farm or otherwise. Anyway, I'll pass the mic along. <laughs> oh, you want me to do that now? Yeah. Okay. And here's a statement from uh, Senator Peter Welch. Meals on Wheels is a critically important program that not only provides nutritious food, but also a sense of community. The work that Meals on Wheels does in Montpelier and across the state to support seniors every day is essential. With more than 20,000 seniors experiencing food insecurity, Meals on Wheels couldn't be more important. As a member of the Senate Agriculture Committee, I will continue to fight and protect the programs that support our farmers and feed our communities. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Chris. I'm from MVP and I'm a program manager in partnership with uh, the University of Vermont Health Network. Um, happy to be here, this is my second time back and, and full disclosure, the first time I was in the back kitchen and luckily Poa put up with me long enough to, to not get rid of me. Um, we, uh, we partner with um, MSAC and, and the FEAST program and we come here on about a quarterly basis and hopefully we can we can increase some of those numbers because the, the time I was here was a great, it was really fulfilling to be here and, and get to work alongside you, Poa, so thank you for having us. Um, we think that in our communities, it's not just about when you're at your, your doctor's office, it's, it's your whole body and, and really the food is medicine. Um, so it's something that we, we're really happy to be a partnership with here. Um, and uh, we're, we're honored to be here and, and thank you very much. Hi, I'm Nancy, and um, I'm from Montpelier, and I've been doing this for a couple of years. Um, and I actually delivered Meals on Wheels when I was a, uh, a teacher it, because I had a very light load in the summer, and so I would deliver then in New York State. And so I'm a long time. And it's, it's in my DNA to want to feed my mother, my grandmother, and me. <laughs> and I want to feed people with nutritious, delicious meals. And thanks to our feast program and our wonderful chef, that's exactly what I do, and it's a joy. Uh, the other joy, and my delivery is the people I deliver to. I never get through 
a delivery route without a lot of laughs and a lot of conversation. And, you know, they're part of my family now. So it's the, this route is very important to me. Um, and I will read Anne Watson's uh, statement. She was our mayor and is now a Vermont state senator. <coughs> Neil Sunwheels represents the very best of Vermont's community spirit. Through the tireless dedication of her volunteers and staff, they ensure that no senior citizen faces hunger alone. They don't just deliver meals. They also bring companionship and care. And by the way, that's mutual. The volunteers with Meals on Wheels embody the values that make Vermont such a wonderful place to live. Everyone, regardless of age or circumstances, deserves dignity and nourishment. A huge thank you to everyone who volunteers with Meals on Wheels. You nourish both body and soul. Thank you for your dedication and service to our community. And I just want to say in our society, nobody should be hungry. I'm Kim Cheney. <coughs> I live in um, Montpelier. I've been a driver, I think almost two years now. And I don't get lost often, but one day I got desperate and I did a U-turn on Barry Street um, because I had missed a meal and I had to find my recipient. I was clever enough to destroy the tire on my car and leave me completely unable to deliver my meals. <laughs> but I sent out an emergency session and pretty soon Somebody showed up, took all my meals, and got them delivered and <laughs> helped me get it in the way. Uh, it's the spirit of this place. And like all drivers, I think you you get very fond of the people that you that you see and from day to day and wonder how they're doing, even though they're only uh short conversations. Um, it's part of the rhythm of life for all of us and it, it's, it's a uh, pleasure to volunteer. Hello everyone, my name is Marcy Kreitz and I also work for the Council on Aging. Um, I live in Barrie, but um, this is just one of <laughs> This is one of 13 meal sites that we do partner with and I'm so honored to work with. Um, my role at the Council on Aging is um, mostly data management and I also do a lot of the signups for our Meals on Wheels recipients. So when folks call here looking for Meals on Wheels, they're gonna end up having to talk to me. <laughs> so, um, and my background is in social work, so it's a wonderful fit. And when I retire, I plan on being a Meals on Wheels driver. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Kim Lipinski. I work for the Council on Aging as the Director of Nutrition and Wellness. And thanks for inviting me, Poa. I appreciate it. Um, I want to speak to Poa's leadership. He has really grown as a leader in this program, and it's been such a pleasure to watch. Um, I think today is a really good example of what he brings to the program. And um, we've worked through all kinds of things together around data, around, you know, now you're establishing weekly meals again, the congregate meals, so, so many things have grown here under your leadership. And I'm really um, proud to be able to work with you and watch this growth and look forward to everything that's up, uh, upcoming for you in the program. Um, I want to encourage everyone to partake in the fundraising efforts, um, particularly the, the online auction that's over there. 
I think those are really, really fun things to ha you know to participate in, um, and 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 everything else. It, the volunteer days, your open house, and other fundraisers. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pitten. I'm the new director of uh, program and membership here at the Montpelier Senior Activity Center, and it's been really fun for me to watch uh, what happens in the Meals on Wheels program and in the FEAST program uh, and to begin to learn about all the awesome things that are happening uh, in, that, in those programs. Um, and I too am excited to see uh, the congregate meals come back and, um, and to be able to work with POA and Shalanda as we try and meet the needs of people in our community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Beth Stern. I used to work for the Council on Aging, but I don't anymore. I now um, am an outreach representative for Senator Bernie Sanders, so I, I want to just send his greetings to you all and his thanks for the work you're doing. Um, so right now, the Older Americans Act, which is the funding source for the meals, um, both Congregate and Meals on Wheels, is being reauthorized. That's happening this year. And the senator held a hearing earlier this month about the reauthorization of the Older Americans Act. And his, the staff in DC on the HELP Committee, which is Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions, are in charge of the process of the reauthorization. So they're working really hard on um, talking to stakeholders, getting information, and seeing about how we can um, reauthorize the Older Americans Act in a way that meets the needs of today's older Vermonters and older Americans, Act, older Americans, because you know since it was last reauthorized, which was I think five years ago, things a lot of things have changed, and there's new ways of doing services that I that, that the Older Americans Act needs to recognize. So there's a f opportunities for people to give input into that. Um, you, I can give you information about how to do that right now. There's, um, it's called a request for information that's been sent out. So anybody who wants to um, give some input can do that. Um, you can also just talk to me. I'm glad to forward on information. But really, the senator's focus on this, um, in terms of meals especially, is um, doubling the funding for the Older Americans Act. That's the one of his focus areas. Now, unfortunately, the reauthorization doesn't actually um, set the funding levels, but but they can make recommendations, and, and he routinely asks to, to dramatically increase the funding. And also looking at ways to make the act more flexible to, again, to meet the needs of, of seniors and service providers today. Um, so whether that's funding grab-and-go meals or um, finding different ways to increase the um, variety of food, um, make sure about other things, um, finding more ways to partner to get fresh and local food. You guys do a great job with that already. Um, and all of, a, you know, all of those things are things that the Older Americans Act is, is really focused on. So um, I do need to leave at noon, but if anybody um, you know, wants to contact me, I can leave some cards. So thank you, and thank you for all your work. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie. Um, I use he, him pronouns, and I am the Feast Farm Manager. Um, I love any opportunity I get to spend time at MSAC. Um, uh, the Feast Farm Manager, I kind of fall under the Parks Department, um, and I'm a very direct, um, close collaborator with everyone here at the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. I love coming here not just for the food, for the people, but as you mentioned, the spirit of the place is something that's just really special. Um, so I actually um, moved here for this job. I um, moved to Vermont with my wife um, co a year or so ago now with the hopes of planting roots somewhere. And we landed somewhere else and liked it in many ways, but there was something missing. and. Um, Part of that was the work that I was doing, and I saw this job listed and um, thought it might have been too good to be true, like a city program that has a farm that feeds um, a social program here in town. And I immediately applied and was very happy to get the job and, and moved to Montpelier for this. 
um, and kind of in the greater context of like just really hoping to find um, somewhere to plant my roots. Um, and one of the reasons that we moved to Vermont was because of the reputation for it having being a very community-minded place and just being very welcoming to ag agriculture and very agriculturally minded. Um, and then it didn't take long, maybe like one or two days of spending time with the people that I'm working with to like really feel like, yeah, like I think we found home. Um, and it's just been growing ever since. And I have a good time talking to some of my friends um, from the state that I moved to, which I think is all, also pretty agriculturally minded. But I like he's so surprised; it blows his mind that there is a city-run farming program that feeds a senior center. Um, it's just like it's really incredible. I think it's a special and unique program, and I'm very happy to be a part of it. And I'm very inspired by the people I work with. And um, what could be better than working um, outside and working with people and feeding people and being in a good community? So I feel very grateful. Hi, I'm Kara. I use they, them pronouns. I am employed by the city in the Parks and Trees Department, which supports the farm and is under the same umbrella as the Senior Center of which I am a member, and I'm here as a guest reader. So, this is from Feed Every Need. Feed Every Need, a newly formed nonprofit organization based in Northfield, Vermont, that has recently begun providing nutritious prepared meals for distribution to those facing food insecurity throughout greater central Vermont, including the Montpelier Senior Activities Center. For the past three years, Jonathan and Lisa Burr, owners of the Woods Lodge, have been developing and perfecting systems, processes, and recipes designed to meet the needs of those being served by the Vermont Everyone and Emergency Eats programs. Their involvement in these programs allowed for a firsthand look at the incredible impact that making prepared meals available to the community has had, and also revealed to them that a reliable and sustainable resource was needed to address this now and well into the future. In response to this, the Burrs established a new nonprofit called Feed Every Need to do just that. Because Feed Every Need relies solely on grants, donations, and financial contributions for its operations, the organization is currently looking for grant opportunities and other sources of support to ensure its longevity and sustainability. Many Vermonters who are unable to utilize food shelf items such as canned goods and fresh produce due to their living situations or merely due to lack of time or ability to prepare, prepare meals can find themselves empty-handed. Prepared meals are a key component in the ecosystem of food security work, be it post-crisis or day-to-day. -day. Feed Every Need is now working with partners that serve low and moderate income Vermonters to fill that gap. Feed Every Need currently delivers 800 meals per week in various formats to more than 10 different organizations in Washington and Lamoille counties who then distribute them to their communities. There are plans in place for Feed Every Need to expand outreach and assist more communities in need, explore the possibility of adding home delivery for those who may not have access to current distribution sites, and scale up production to reach more households. Feed Every Need's mission is to help fight hunger and food insecurity in Vermont by providing prepared meal solutions for distribution to communities in need. More information at feedeveryneed.org. Hello, um, my name is Layla. I use she or they pronouns, and I work for the Parks and Trees Department as well. I was around at the inception, near inception of the Feast Farm, and have seen that program through its now into its fourth year of growth and change. And I also like see the core of city role as providing food for citizens and public spaces to be where you don't have to spend money to have community. And I see MSAC and parks as like, yeah, just the spirit and heart of what a city should do and provide. And I think Meals on Wheels is the beating heart of that. Parks and trees, public spaces. Yeah, so I'm so grateful to have this job and to collaborate with uh, the 
Feast Meals program with the Feast Farm and to be part of this community. Yeah, I'm Ron Merkin. I'm just happened to see Poa in the hallway and he asked me to play the piano. <laughs> That's why I'm here. But um, I'm not working in any, any of the ways that people have described. I just happen to be here. Um, one thing that occurred to me though, when Poa was talking about attracting more people, if there's been any outreach to people other than seniors, uh, has there been or have you publicized that to encourage younger people to come? You might get a lot more people in that case, I don't know. Okay, sure. All right, thank you. I didn't come to talk. T I was invited. He told me I, I, have, I get c the food from this place. It's something new for me. I live on the third floor, and I always made my own food, but I, I get the food here. I enjoyed the people that are getting it ready. They're nice people. I've lived here for quite a while, and it's, I've changed in many, many people doing work here. And it's wonderful that they can uh, get people here to take care of us because there are so many people that need to have food. And it thrills me that they have a man and women that bring it to people's houses because I have lived in Montpelier all my life, and there were a lot of people back when I was a child and a woman they weren't getting any food. They didn't have any money. There was no food. They were on the streets. And everything has changed, and it's wonderful. Um, I'm, I was asked to come, and I thought, no, I don't think I will. Then I thought, no, I need to know what's going on. I live here, and, and you're doing a wonderful job, I must say that. I have, I've met people who get the food, and they really enjoy it. So. I'm happy, and Co is doing a good job. We love her, all the women, we all love her. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm Tootie, I live upstairs. Thanks. Um, it's so immensely inspiring to hear from all of our stakeholders here, and I'm gonna pass it over to Solana now, and also Caitlin and Nancy, if you wanted to say a little bit more. Um, I know we kinda got rushed, and David as well. So, yeah, pass it along. Hello everyone, my name is Shalonda James and I'm the executive chef of the Meals Wheels program and I go by the pronouns of she and her. And working for Meals on Wheels for the past three years has been an honor to be in this position, to be able to help strengthen the outreach of our community, to know that what we are doing is having a direct impact on community members that need it the most. The simple act of performing um, chopping onions, peeling carrots, uh, washing dishes has improved the quality, has improved the quality of life of so many individuals in our community. Uh, having the ability to create an environment for joy, learning, self-improvement, and companionship, sharing good stories, laugh, mute, laughter, music, and of course, good food. Uh, the most cherished outreach that we have developed would be our mentorship through our partnership with surrounding high schools uh, that helps them grow through leaps and bounds. Uh, the students come in and gain knowledge from myself and other volunteers who are in our program and the farm is the highlighted and champion, the farm stand and farm are the highlighted and championed programs for the Meals on Wheels program, collaborating with parks department and bringing in fresh nutritional food to our community by providing the farm stand. Individuals can come to receive the full benefits of the harvest. Each, each program that we have is helping to end food scar scarcity with one meal at a time. Hi, I'm David. I volunteer um, in the kitchen. It's, uh, as they say in Ireland, great crack, which means a lot of fun. Um, but when I think about it, I think about my wife has worked in gleaning for years. It's part of a larger continuum. We have farmers that donate food. We have volunteers and, uh, and some paid, all rightfully so. 
out there picking produce, bringing it here, bringing it to other sites so people can feed themselves. I can't think of anything more meaningful than to help in that larger sense. In, in the midst of so much confusion and so many things that are wrong with the world, it's nice to go in and cut carrots and know that you're doing something that's meaningful and with great people who are supporting that effort. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for the opportunity to redo. <laughs> so I'm Caitlin Rosine. I use she or they pronouns. I do live in Plainfield, although I arrived in Vermont, in Montpelier, and was a Barry Street resident for about four or five years. Um, I also, before working at the Council on Aging, I worked with Community Harvest of Central Vermont, um, and I'm imagining Cynthia is your spouse, one of my um, most favorite volunteers. Um, but so I have had an opportunity to see many of the different parts of the system, and in my new role at Council on Aging, I'm, ex I'm thrilled to get more folks involved from a volunteer perspective. And I'm so hoping to meet the current volunteers and hear a little more about your personal stories. Um, and I'm just honored and inspired from everything I've heard from folks today. Hello again. Um, Nancy Murray, she, her pronouns. Um, and the role that I play at um, CVCOA is one of looking for the younger, partly recruiting some of the younger volunteers. So um, I can maybe focus a little on, on that for the Meals on Wheels. I live in Brookfield, so I'm actually Orange County, but um, I've been in Vermont now for uh, almost 50 years. Um, way back when I moved here, I was told if I made it 50 years that maybe I could call myself a Vermonter. Um, but I have, my, I have my third generation here, so my kids and then uh, moving forward, um, grandchildren here. Uh, I've really enjoyed hearing everything um, everyone has shared about the Meals on Wheels. Randolph is the senior center that I would be most connected to, um, and I know that they have, they, they serve meals four days a week. Um, at the noon hour. Um, I haven't yet really in, gotten down to uh, experience them yet, but it inspires me to do so from here, and it's been um, wonderful um, hearing all of the things on this. It did bring me back to when I first moved to Vermont. Um, I used to direct people to my house by the, how many dairy farms they passed along the way. There were actually eight to get to, to where I lived. Uh, or where I still live, um, and watching the change over the decades of what has happened to our dairy farming, family farms industry. Um, I also have been an educator at Vermont Technical College and loved my association there because of the agricultural things that I was able to be a part of, as in picking my apples from the orchard for the last 45 years or so. Um, that the, the connection between agriculture and community in Vermont um, is just something that's always been a treasure to me in terms of my local farmers that supply me with a good amount of what I have, the number of farmers that I know. Um, but it's just made for such an enriching life here in Vermont and community for all of us that I think things like Meals on Wheels program um, and the commitment that we have as a community to feeding our neighbors is a pretty special one. Thank you, and Nancy? Yes. Okay, thank you, Nancy, and I think that's a great start to a response to Tootie's question. Um, I'm aware of time, it's four minutes to noon, so I'll keep my comments to four minutes, and then uh, when I'm done speaking, Please, if you have time, stick around. Um, we have great refreshments representing uh, our kitchen. Thank you, Shalanda. <laughs> Always. And I think I want to tell a personal story uh, to finish our time here. 
Um, I'm Polo Mutino. I use uh, he and they pronouns. And I'm genderqueer. And working at a senior center is a lot of fun uh, in terms of how people perceive my gender. And uh, it's been very affirming to uh, be uh, referred to as he and accepted as a man. I always thought, everybody thought I was a young gay man. I'm not sure really what they think, I'm, but <laughs> I'll leave that a mystery. I'm genderqueer. Um, and I have a background that goes very deep in food and cooking and farming, uh, all the way to my ancestors uh, from Italy and Ireland and other places in North uh, West Europe. Um, and when I was 15, I entered a science research program at my public high school in Westchester County, New York. And we were told to study uh, popular science for a summer and then come back for our first year of the program and talk about what caught our passion. And I read a book called The Science of Harry Potter. And in it, there was a chapter on herbalism as the equivalent to potions. So I researched the New York Botanical Gardens and found a wonderful graduate student named Nat Bletter who took me under his wing and told me, well, ethnobotany is just the study of people and plants. So what do you want to focus on within that? And gave me a book called Coming Home to Eat by Gary Nobhan, who does work in uh, the Southwest. And I read that book in about 36 hours, one weekend. And I decided that my science research project would be the uh, health effects, cost, and feasibility of a 100-mile diet. I knew that Westchester County, directly north of the Bronx, used to be the breadbasket that served New York City. And well before colonization, it was a rich area where indigenous groups such as the Lenape uh, lived. So I'm looking around me, and I'm not seeing people eating local food. But I'm determined that I can get a full diet within 100 miles. So for three months, uh, foolishly starting in May, I ate only local foods. And there were not many vegetables in May. I remember making a, a sandwich with thinly sliced rutabaga as the bread. And I extended my range to 250 miles so that I could get uh, grains from the Penyan region and, and fell in love with buckwheat. Then I recruited people, because there's no statistical significance to one person doing anything when you're a scientist. So I recruited six people and had them do this diet for 30 days. And at that point, I was able to give them a resource list of all the places to get local food. We studied their labs. Uh, they all went to a primary care physician and had blood work drawn before the diet and after the diet. And we discovered that their triglyceride levels decreased. Uh, and they overall showed signs of health. Their cholesterol decreased. My um, subjects were between the age of 15 and 55. I presented that research at the United Nations. I went to college. I went to college in Iowa because I wanted to see the heartland of conventional agriculture. I didn't want to do local farming in Vermont because there's so many local farms in Vermont. Uh, but there's so many soy farms and corn farms and hog farms and chicken farms that are highly industrial and poisoning the land. So I left after two years. It was an uphill battle. The, uh, the kitchen at the university I went to, or the college, Grinnell College, um, would refuse foods from local farmers because they didn't fit into their slicing machines. The potatoes weren't perfect, like an Idaho potato. The carrots weren't perfect, like a carrot from California. And I transferred to Sterling College in Craftsbury, Vermont, because I was desperate for community. Even though there was more queer community at this liberal arts school in Iowa, there was community in, in Craftsbury. And I self-designed a major in farming and social justice and um, graduated in 2010. 
in 2021, I started a master's in social work program with a focus on geriatric social work and intergenerational programs, as well as youth work and work with queer youth. Then I found this job position and put uh, energy into my altar and energy into my cover letter and said, please let me get this job. I was living in Plainfield at the time and I moved to Montpelier and I got the job at the same time and it has been an uphill battle um, to manage this program. Um, we saw the fierce leadership of Sarah Lipton who hired me um, and then her departure left me without a director or a supervisor, and there was a flood, and we lost our farm under six feet of water. And out of that came the Local Foods Purchasing Assistant Grant, and we opened up a farm stand for 10 weeks in which we gave food around away to everybody. It was Marek, uh, an AmeriCorps member at the parks, who said, this farm stand shouldn't be siloed. It shouldn't just be for older adults. Um, and the, the mandate of the grant was that the food would not be sold and it would not be cooked and it could not have been cooked and then sold. So we were talking about, uh, low, and it had to be uh, two-thirds local. Um, so we had beautiful food and partially thanks to Kim's help, we had um, a ten or eight or 10 CSA boxes from Good Heart Farm in uh, Worcester. We were buying local meat, local cheese, local vegetables, um, which anyone shopping at Hunger Mountain Co-op buying a week's worth of groceries would have spent $75 on to bring home. And we were sending them to people for free. And we were advertising at the food shelf here at Just Basics. And people were coming in and crying and laughing. And there were two-year-olds here with their young parents who lived in the Berry Street neighborhood. There were 80-plus-year-olds walking with their walker to have groceries put on the, the seat of the walker. And we did not get funding to continue that, <clears throat> but we will reapply uh, for the next grant cycle. So it's amazing to partner with Shalanda. I, she was part of my interview team. She and Sarah interviewed me, and I'm grateful that they agreed to hire me. Um, Shalanda and I share an office, and a lot of the behind-the-scenes work of this program. Uh, before me, the program was empty. There, un there was somebody <coughs> uh, who, had, who was unable to work, so there was no feast program manager for five months. And Shalanda took over probably half of the program manager position in addition to all of the volunteer management and producing 350 meals a week. And Sarah took over the other half along with Matt is my, I don't know if they would say that, those numbers, but that, that seems to be the case in, it, in terms of the amount of work for this program that Matt and Shalanda do. And it's, um, it's taken me till now to feel like feast is the future of feast is like walking with all of you in a meadow in the sunshine on a vermont farm with picnic baskets like we've got this this is a world-class program and as bernie said a few years ago as far as he knew we are the only capital city with a farm that feeds a meals on wheels program and that may have changed and i hope that's changed um, and my vision for revenue is to rent our kitchen more and uh, to start a cafe here in the mornings that's volunteer-led and I'm the manager of. Uh, so I hope that comes to pass. Um, I've heard countless times from members of the Senior Center that this place isn't what it used to be. And that's partially because there's less people using the space, whether it's for computer labs or socializing or drinking coffee. Um, so I hope to continue to be part of the heart of the Montpelier Senior Activity Center and to be here for a, a good while, at least until we balance the budget and my position could be neatly handed over to the next leader of the FEAST program. So I've taken us 
six minutes longer than I meant to, but I really appreciate you hearing my story. And thank you for coming today. Thank you for taking over an hour out of your time to travel here. And um, I hope you all have a great weekend. Enjoy uh, this mid-March weather. I do need to scoot, but I just want to um, let people know that the um, congressionally directed spending earmark process has just opened up. So if, if you are looking for funding, um, <laughs> take a look at that and see if that's something that you might want to apply for. Um, it is a long process. It's not like you know you you can't apply today and think that you're going to get money in a month or it, it's probably going to be two years. Um, but and it's a competitive process, but innovative programs like these are things that the senator's always looking for. So take a look. It just came out on the Bernie Buzz. And um, if you have questions, people here know how to reach me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other logistics or burning things that people want to say before we make this casual and network and mingle and eat refreshments and drink refreshments? Hi again. I just thought it'd be good to mention that the farm stand will be starting up again in sometime in June, depending when we start having produce available, I guess. Um, and these these pictures are, they really do tell the story. And that will be on Wednesday mornings in front of the building. Okay. Uh, maybe we could, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'll say at the same time, at the count of three, go feast. Okay. One, two, three. Go, go feast. feast. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>